To listen to the full audio series, install the Pocket FM app now. Don't ever reveal your secret to anybody, son. Alex's dying mother said to him right before she collapsed. Make me a promise. You will prove yourself to be worthy until the family contacts you. Do you hear me? Alex was a 13-year-old boy holding his dying mother in his arms. I promise, Mom, Alex said as his voice choked. Okay, Mommy is going to sleep now, baby. Alex's mom died that day and left behind a 13-year-old boy filled with rage and obsession. An obsession to become worthy. His mother's death left young Alex determined to carry out that promise. But Alex was also penniless and without any help in the world. So he spent every hour of every day working shifts at any job he could take. Whether breaking his back while stocking shelves, scrubbing toilets at dive bars, or making food deliveries in the most dangerous neighborhoods, Alex knew only one thing, to keep his family secret and to become worthy by earning money. But what was his family secret? Every penny he earned was put toward his promise to his mother. Alex was now a college student. While his friends were out partying and spending their parents' money, Alex was at home in his rat-infested apartment eating dented cans of tuna fish on day-old bread. When he wasn't working, Alex was studying his ass off to become worthy winning an academic scholarship to the prestigious Preston University so he could rub elbows with the sons and daughters of the most elite families in the city. Alex was on his path to live the American dream. But Alex's secret was soon going to be exposed. Alex Ambrose was treated like a leper on campus. College kids had a unique way of being cruel to those who didn't fit in with the latest trends and styles, especially at Preston University. While all the students were wearing Gucci or the latest Air Jordans, Alex walked the campus wearing beat-up, dirty sneakers and pants four sizes too big and ten years out of style. Dude, you look like you're wearing clothes even the Salvation Army wouldn't take, was one of the most recent brutal insults he heard walking across campus to class. Why is there a homeless kid in our study group? Ew, Rose said as Alex sat beside her in the library. Rose, it's me, Alex. I'm in this class too. I don't know who you are, but you're gross and you make me feel uncomfortable, the girl said as she got up to move a few seats away from Alex. Just stay away from me, okay? Even at a highly competitive institution like Preston, Alex was exceptional at his studies. Many professors considered him one of the brightest students ever to attend the school. Working hard was a discipline instilled in him by his mother. But no matter how well he did in class, None of the students cared. Appearances were everything at Preston, and looking like a broke-ass bum made him practically untouchable. Alex sat down quietly in a corner when the professor walked in and looked for Alex. Congratulations to Alex Ambrose, the winner of this year's math competition, this calculus professor announced to the class. Stand up, Alex. Alex stood up, hoping for applause. Instead, everyone laughed. <laughs> Why are we passing out awards to janitors? One student asked. It's like that movie with Matt Damon where the janitor is secretly a math genius, a girl yelled out. Too bad this guy is much uglier than Matt Damon. But Alex could handle the insults about his clothes and the way he carried himself. That was nothing compared to the awful things that his classmates were going to throw at him. Hey Alex, said Brendan, the quarterback of the school's football team. Is it true your mom killed herself? Don't talk about my mom, Brendan, Alex shot back. I heard she died while trying to get an abortion, said another player on the team. The doctor messed up and saved you instead. My mother died from cancer, if you assholes really need to know, Alex said as he clenched his fists. He tried his best to control himself. Come on, Alex, Brendan said as he got into Alex's face. Make your move. You know you want to do it. I don't think you're man enough to stop me from talking smack about your mom. Alex knew Brendan was trying to bait him into fighting. But while Brendan would only get a slap on the wrist because he was important to the college as an all-American football player, Alex would lose his full-ride scholarship he worked so hard for and be thrown out of school. And Alex had to fulfill the promise he had given to his mom, so he controlled himself and kept quiet. 
But not every student wanted to torment Alex. That day, something unexpected happened. As luck would have it, one of the prettiest girls in the school took an interest in him. Alex couldn't believe that a beautiful, rich girl like Kathy wanted to talk to him. Thanks for helping me with the chemistry homework, Alex, Kathy said with a flirty smile. You're so smart. I don't know how you remember everything. Do you want to go to the movies with me tonight? With me? Alex asked, stunned that someone like Kathy would even consider going out with him. Yes, Kathy replied, and then added, You could come to my dorm after that. Alex was a good-looking guy, but he never thought any girl would ever look at him beyond his poverty and his old clothes. At first, Kathy and Alex's differences made them a cute couple. Alex, try on this sweater I bought you, Kathy said as she handed him an expensive V-neck cardigan she picked up at Saks Fifth Avenue. It's really nice, Alex noted. Thank you, but it's too expensive for me. Just try it on for me, Alex, she said as she held the sweater up to Alex's chest. You'd be so handsome if you let me clean you up a little. I like the way I look, Kathy, Alex tried to explain. I know I'm not the coolest or most fashionable, but I like modesty and simple living, and that's what I thought you liked about me. Kathy tried her hardest to accept Alex for who he was, but his lack of cash caused some cracks in the relationship. Let me cook dinner for you here, Kathy, Alex said as he opened his refrigerator, only to find a half-empty box of Chinese takeout and a bottle of old ketchup inside. You never take me out anywhere nice, Alex. Kathy pouted as her frustration with Alex was starting to test her patience. I can't afford the places you want to go to right now, Kathy, Alex said. I'll pay for us tonight again, Alex, but I don't know how much longer I can do this. Every day he felt Kathy was pulling away from him, little by little, and the relentless bullying by other people was getting worse and worse. Hey buddy, Billy said to Alex, acting like he didn't recognize him as he walked out of a stall in the bathroom. Can you refill the toilet paper and maybe clean up some of the piss on the floor? I spilled a little. Billy was Kathy's ex-boyfriend and hated Alex. Not funny, Billy, it's me, Alex, and I'm not a janitor. Alex, sorry, buddy, I didn't recognize you with that hobo style you got going. I thought you were some immigrant they brought in to clean shit up. You're very funny, Billy, Alex said sarcastically. If you ever run out of spending your daddy's money, you can always make it as a comedian. Even Alex's usual sanctuaries from the abuse at school, like at his jobs, started to become places of misery. Alex, we meet again. You're a stock boy? Asked Kathy's ex-boyfriend Billy, as he stood under the ladder Alex was using to stock shelves. Alex ignored Billy so he could finish his job. Alex, do you hear me? Asked Billy, as he started to knock over the glass jars of baby food below Alex, letting them smash onto the floor, pieces of glass and green goop flying everywhere. You better clean that crap up, Alex. Someone can slip and fall. Ha! I can't believe Kathy dumped me for a loser like you. Alex was at the end of his patience. Not only would he have to clean all that up, but the store owner was probably going to throw him out for this. Whenever times got really tough for Alex, the only true place of peace he found was visiting the grave of his mother. But there was no peace at the cemetery today either. Alex was tired, and very frustrated. He didn't want peace. He wanted to vent tonight. Placing a fresh bouquet of flowers he purchased at the supermarket with his employee discount, Alex let his frustrations out. How much longer do I have to wait? Alex angrily shouted. Everybody mocks me every day. I'm about to lose my girlfriend, the one person who is nice to me. You told me to become worthy and not reveal the family's secret. How much more worthy do I have to be? Kathy is going to leave me. Every decision I make seems wrong. I needed your help and you just died. Rain started to fall from the dark clouds overhead. Alex didn't know if this was a sign from his mother, but he suddenly felt guilty. I'm sorry, Mom. I miss you today just as much as the day you died. I'm not as strong as you were. Help me figure this all out. I'm doubting my plan. I'm doubting I can keep up with this charade any longer. 
It's about time the world knows the truth. The next day, Alex was walking to his class when the same group of bullies found him again. Brendan, Billy, Rose, and others. All of them hated Alex because they found him disgusting and unworthy of being in their college. Billy hated Alex because Kathy, the girl who dumped him, was now dating Alex. And Rose hated Alex because Kathy was her friend, and she hated the fact that someone from her circle was hanging out with someone like Alex. Hey, piece of trash, Alex. Want to earn a quick buck by washing my car? I'll pay a full dollar. You will be able to afford dinner. Billy mocked him as the others laughed. <laughs> Stop it, you guys. That's so rude, said Rose, faking pity. Alex, don't listen to them. I wanted to genuinely talk to you, though. Alex stopped and looked at Rose. He knew this was most probably another way to make a joke out of him, but he still gave it a shot. Alex, look, we all know that you don't make enough money. So I was thinking, how about you apply for a job in my father's company? I can get you into one of my dad's offices, the Brennan Empire, the multi-billion dollar corp. You know that, right? Rose told Alex. But why are you offering me a job? I thought you guys hated me, Alex asked. Are you crazy? The boys fool around with everyone, and you're genuinely smart. I'm sure there's a lot of use for someone like you in one of my dad's many companies. Alex knew that what Rose was saying was out of character for her. He also knew that he would probably be bullied at work too. But he needed to survive until it was time to reveal his family's secret and keep the promise he gave his mother. And so, Alex said, yes. Awesome. But there is one condition. Rose smiled. What condition? Alex asked, a little skeptical. You need to break up with Kathy. Rose stated plainly. Break up with Kathy? What are you saying? Why do you want me to break up with Kathy? Because you stink Alex. And Kathy is one of us. She deserves to be with a high society elite like Billy, not a waste like you. Rose insulted Alex. Alex was deeply hurt and shocked at this turn of events. He truly loved Kathy and responded immediately. Keep your offer, Rose. I love Kathy, and you cannot buy my loyalty. Alex walked away in anger. Rose was fuming that a broke loser like Alex had refused to work in her father's famous billionaire dollar company. Billy asked her why she would offer him a job in the first place, when she replied, Oh, I was never going to give him a job anyway. I simply wanted to have some fun watching him try, and eventually reject him. But how dare he reject me? I'm Rose Brennan. I'm going to teach him a lesson. The place where he lives, it's a rented apartment in a building owned by my father. Alex has no idea how powerful my dad is. I'm going to show him what it costs to reject an offer from the Brennans. When Alex came home to his apartment that night, he noticed his front door was already open. Inside, a man wearing a suit stood with some papers in his hand. You can't just come in here without my permission, Alex angrily said. Who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. What matters is that your rent was due on the first, today is the fifth. Plus, you owe last month's rent too, the man said. You'll get your money, I promise, growled Alex. Enough with your promises. You have money to take your girlfriend out for dinners while you don't pay your rent, barked the man. I will have my men come in here and throw you out. How does this man know about me having a girlfriend? Alex thought. That's when he realized. This cockroach-infested building was owned by Mr. Brennan. He owned many such buildings where poor people were charged high rents. And Mr. Brennan was the father of Rose Brennan. Rose clearly hated Alex after what happened today, and this was obviously her trick of getting back at Alex, or to try and break him up with Kathy. That's when the man in the suit called for his men. Grab him, boys! Get the hell off me! Alex screamed as the thugs grabbed Alex's arms and pinned him against the wall. They then searched all of his stuff and found a stash of ones and twos rolled up under his pillow. Saving for a rainy day, eh? We'll take that. This hardly covers your rent, son, but it's a start, the man said as he counted the money Alex had saved from the tips he got when working as a delivery boy. No, please! I've been saving that money to buy my girlfriend a gift! 
Leave that, please. I'll pay up as soon as possible, Alex begged. A gift for your girlfriend? Ha, we're definitely taking this then. Why don't you just leave this place, Alex? The man asked as the men let Alex loose. I can convert this place to a two-bedroom. Maybe get a pair of nice college girls to use their daddy's money after I jack up the rent. You cannot even afford this place. I grew up here, Alex said as struggled to pull himself up. This place reminds me of my mother. No, you're behind on rent and it's time to throw you out. Do you know how crazy the Brennans are about money? I'll pay whatever price they were going to charge a new tenant, Alex pleaded. Just give me back that money for now. Okay, boys, let him be, the man ordered. But I'm keeping this cash, you cheap fool. The men walked out. Alex now had absolutely no money on him, and he wondered how he could sustain his relationship with Kathy in such a situation, especially with her birthday coming up. It was obvious to Alex and everyone who knew him that he was reaching his breaking point. Rose was delighted that Alex's savings were confiscated, and she hoped that Kathy would break up with him soon. The next day, she crossed paths with Alex on purpose. Uh, Alex, aren't you going to say hi? Rose asked. Hey, Alex quietly said as he walked past Rose. What's with the attitude, Alex? You're nothing but trash in this school. Trash? Alex asked. Alex, I've heard about your problems. You can't even pay rent, and Kathy's birthday is coming up. What are you going to do? Rose mocked him. All thanks to you. Alex responded. Look, my men were just doing their job. If you leave your girlfriend, my offer for a job is still open. You won't have to be a broke-ass nobody anymore. Plus, if you work for us, nobody will bother you for rent. What do you think? Alex thought about his situation, hesitated, and answered, Uh, okay. Rose couldn't believe what she was hearing, she tried her best to hide the sinister smile that was forming on her face. Oh, amazing. That is a very smart decision, Alex. So, when are you breaking up with Kathy? About that, Alex tried to explain. I genuinely love Kathy, and I don't wish to break up with her. Can we please make this work without the breakup? But Rose did not budge because all she cared about was breaking up Alex and Kathy. Alex sometimes wondered if Rose was jealous of the love and attention that Kathy received in her relationship. Absolutely not. Either forget Kathy or forget this job, Rose said sternly. Well, in that case, goodbye, Rose. No job is good enough for me to break up with Kathy. Not even the Brennan Company, Alex responded. Rose turned red with anger and embarrassment. She wasn't used to being rejected. Listen up, Alex. But before Rose could tear into Alex for rejecting her, Kathy joined them. What's going on, guys? inquired Kathy. I was just talking to your boyfriend here, Rose replied. What do you see in a dirtbag like him? Dirtbag? Kathy asked, clearly annoyed. You need to be careful with your words, Rose. Don't act like you care about him, Kathy. How long are you going to be a sugar mommy for this piece of trash? Rose hissed. Just because your father is rich doesn't mean that you get to treat people like they're nothing, Kathy shot back. Oh, honey, Alex is nothing. Ask him. He doesn't have a single penny on him, and he's two months behind on his rent. My dad owns the building he stays in, so you best believe that he's going to be out on the streets any time now. Enjoy living the rest of your life with loser Alex, said Rose as she stormed off. Kathy didn't talk as Alex walked her home from class. Alex could tell there was a lot on her mind, but he wanted to give her some space. When they arrived at Kathy's door, she quickly turned around and said, I don't think you should come in. But why? Alex asked. We need to break up Alex. I'm not happy anymore and I'm tired of everyone making fun of me for dating you. Alex was shocked. Since when did you care about what everyone else thinks? It's not just that, Alex, Kathy said as she avoided eye contact with him. It's the money. I'm sick and tired of paying for everything all of the time. You don't even try to chip in anymore. This is so not the life that I had imagined with my boyfriend. Alex felt his heart sink. He knew this conversation was going to happen someday. 
I just need a little more time, Kathy. My position in life is going to change. I just need you to have a little more patience. You have no idea. Everything is about to change. Patience? Kathy asked. Don't you think I've been very patient with you? How long do you expect me to be patient? Until I'm 40 years old? 50? At the rate I'm spending money on us, I'll be broke in six months. I used to like you, Alex, but I don't want to spend the rest of my life in poverty. Everybody is right. You are a loser, and I deserve better. Kathy turned into her room and shut the door right in Alex's face. Alex took the long walk back home alone wondering if he had the strength to see his plan until the end, if he had the patience to keep the promise he had given to his mother. How was he going to continue to keep his secret when all the odds were against him? The next day was the annual charity gala at Preston University. The auditorium was packed this year. Tickets sold out as soon as word got out that this year's special guest, Daniel Brennan, was giving the commencement speech. Daniel Brennan was Rose Brennan's father and the owner of the extensive and reputable Brennan group of companies. His power and status was renowned, and Alex was sure that Rose would definitely show off her dad's power today. Alex woke up that morning only to be rudely greeted by men who had come to take over the apartment and throw Alex out for non-payment of rent. Alex had lost everything. His girlfriend, his mother's house, his respect, and his self-confidence. He sat quietly with his handful of belongings on the street, thinking hard about what to do. He was very tempted to go to the bank and claim what rightfully belonged to him, but his mother's promise had stopped him every time. But this time, his situation, Kathy's hurtful words, and the insults from the likes of Rose and Billy pushed him to do the unexpected. Alex got up, filled his college bag with whatever belongings he could fit in it, and started walking towards Metro Skybank. I promised my mother that I would never reveal my family's secret to anyone. But I can at least find out about them, and find out what my true identity and value is, Alex said to himself as he walked to the bank. Metro Skybank was different from most banks, as the clientele were almost exclusively high-end business people. The receptionist saw Alex in his shabby attire and didn't know why he was there. Judging from his appearance and age, he wasn't their usual type of customer. Sir, can I be of assistance? She asked with a polite but forced smile. Alex simply said, I'm here to check my bank balance. Check your balance? The sullen woman asked, sneering at him. Do you have a card? She asked, continuing to smile politely. No, Alex replied, shaking his head. The receptionist made a face at Alex and turned to talk to a colleague. When she turned, there was no one standing where Alex had been. Oh, where's he gone? She wondered. Just as she was about to go back to work, she caught a glimpse of someone out of the corner of her eye. There's the brat, she thought. He had already reached the entrance to the VIP lounge, and a pillar had blocked her view of him. The VIP room was only for high-status customers who were worth at least $30 million, and this young man clearly did not belong. Stop. Don't move, Karen yelled, feeling desperate. But he had already walked through the lounge, opened the door to the VIP room, and stepped inside, locking the door behind him. Hello? Inside the VIP room, Robert Miller, the bank manager, was leaning against the sofa, looking at his phone. When the door suddenly opened, he quickly sat down and hid his phone away. Normally, when a VIP was coming in, the receptionist would notify him in advance. As the customer manager, he was responsible for 31 VIPs, and he knew them like the back of his hand. He immediately began to launch into his normal professional greeting, hoping to undo the poor impression he'd made by slouching against the sofa. But when he saw Alex, his expression froze. He was certain that Alex was not one of his VIPs, nor was he a relative of one. May I ask who you are? Robert asked, looking at the young man, who appeared to be around 20 years old. Robert had no idea who he was. Alex got straight to the point. I'm here to check my money. You have one of our cards? Robert asked, suspicious of Alex's calm expression. No, Alex admitted frankly. Robert was relieved to seemingly be proven right, but even more confused. 
Access to the VIP room required a minimum worth of $3 million, but this man didn't have any money. Why was he so composed? I'm sorry, sir. We can't give out access without a card. Do you require anything else? He's crazy, Robert thought. Why on earth did the receptionist let him in? You have fingerprint recognition here, right? Alex suddenly asked. The fingerprint ID system at the bank was for the wealthiest families and businesses to use. Only a few people had their fingerprints recorded in the system, at least in the New York branch, and no one had used it to access their holdings yet. You want to use it? Robert could no longer bring himself to call Alex, sir. Yes. Alex nodded. Robert was feeling more confused by the second. Why would someone who wasn't even a customer request to use a fingerprint ID? To be honest, even though he was curious, Robert felt that it was barely worth humoring the request. But after considering for a few seconds, he finally decided to let Alex make the attempt. He opened the safe and brought out the fingerprint identification device, which he had never used before. Place your thumb here. Robert indicated the verification area to Alex, who placed his thumb on the sensor. The device lit up with a glaring red light, and the LCD screen displayed the words, Fingerprint Not Recorded. Immediately, Robert's expression turned hostile, and he glared at Alex. He picked up his phone, ready to call the police. Wait, wait, Alex said quickly. Maybe that was the wrong print. I'll try using my index finger this time. Robert smiled coldly. What's your plan here? Your thumb doesn't work, so you'll try your index finger. Then, if your index finger doesn't work, you'll try your middle finger. When you run out of fingers, will you try using your toes? But Alex had already pressed his index finger on the verification area. Robert resolved that if the man's fingerprints weren't accepted this time, he would immediately call the police and have him arrested. A green light appeared on the device, and new details flashed up on the LCD screen. Verification successful. Family account, 01. Verifier, Alexander Ambrose. Account, 0104. Robert gaped at Alex in disbelief for a moment, and then hurriedly squeezed out a smile. Mr. Ambrose, I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I'm Robert Miller, the customer manager for the New York branch. Please allow me to assist you. It's fine, Alex said lightly and stood up. Can I see how much money I have left in my account? Please wait a moment. Robert sat in front of the computer and typed away. Okay, Mr. Ambrose. Robert clicked the enter button on the screen and Alex's account appeared. Robert pointed to the computer screen and said, Mr. Ambrose, the balance of your account is currently $86 million. Robert couldn't help but suck in a breath of cold air. This young man had an enormous fortune. It placed him in the top flight of the 1%. Most people would never be able to even dream of that much money. Alex couldn't believe his eyes, but he tried his best to maintain composure in front of the manager. He was worth $86 million. Why had his mother kept this fact hidden from him? Alex felt strange as he stared at the numbers on the screen. He realized there must definitely be something related to the Ambrose family from which his mother wanted to keep him safe. But the fact was that Alex was worth $86 million and he needed to get used to it. Oh, and you have other assets as well. Let me show you now. Robert clicked through to check several pages in a row. This surveillance screen displays all the physical assets that you hold elsewhere, Robert explained. He clicked on the upper left corner of the screen and brought up the feed from the bank's branch at The Hague, which revealed a sports car. In the lower right corner, it said, Ferrari Pagani. Robert opened up other screens for Alex, one after another. The Hawaii branch displayed a Dominica blue pearl bracelet and four stacks of gold bars. The feed from the French branch in Nice revealed three original Picasso paintings and two Rodin statues and the Cape Town branch had 15 10 karat diamonds, 10 pieces of ivory, and another couple of stacks of gold bars. Robert's eyes almost popped out as he looked at Alex's assets. 
He had never seen anyone so rich. Maybe not even one-tenth as rich. All right, is that it? Alex said before Robert could collect his thoughts. Yes, let me create a card for you. What is the amount that you would like to withdraw? Robert immediately started to make the necessary arrangements, but Alex stopped him. I don't wish to withdraw any money. The card is enough, Alex said. Robert looked at Alex and his appearance, wondering why this young man was choosing to stay in his dirty clothes instead of immediately start using his money to change his status. Robert handed the card over. Mr. Ambrose, your card. Thank you. Alex took the card, stood up, and went to walk out of the room. Alex's life had completely changed within minutes. With all of his assets, he was clearly one of the wealthiest people in the city, and certainly way more wealthy than the Brennans. He decided to directly go to the annual gala at college, where Rose's dad was going to give the commencement speech. But all Alex could think about was his mother and the promise she had asked him to make. Why did mother want to keep me away from my wealth and the Ambrose family? Alex thought. He reached the venue and stood in the back of the auditorium quietly. As Kathy walked by, Alex noticed that she was trying not to be noticed by him. What was worse was that she was holding the hand of her ex-boyfriend, Billy. Hey Alex, isn't that your girlfriend over there? Wonder what she's going to do with Billy tonight? One of the mean students asked mockingly. Excuse me, he's not my boyfriend anymore, Billy. Let's go. Kathy answered and walked away. Alex was hurt, but ignored Kathy's rudeness. Today, there were other things on his mind. Compared to all of the gala's guest speakers of the past, Mr. Brennan was by far the richest and most prestigious speaker Preston has ever had. Even for the students and parents without charity in their hearts, the chance to see Daniel Brennan, a titan of science, technology, and banking, was an event not to be missed. That's when Rose spotted Alex and started to humiliate him once again. Ah, Mr. Alex, the homeless. You're so unbelievable, you know that. You're homeless and dressed in tattered clothes, but you still decided to attend this event. Oh wait, I know why. You obviously wanted to see the luxury and power that my dad has. But let me tell you this, Alex. Don't you dare go anywhere near my father. He's too rich and important to be anywhere near a stinking homeless broke loser like you. Alex looked at Rose and smiled gently. The packed house was electric as Mr. Brennan walked to the stage. He waved to the crowd as they gave him a standing ovation. All the major newspapers brought their top reporters to cover the commencement speech, and it was being broadcast live by all of the major cable news networks. You know what, Rose? Alex turned to Rose and spoke calmly. I have some unfinished business with the Brennans. Rose chuckled. Oh yeah? And what are you going to do about it? You can't do shit to me, Alex. Who said anything about you? said Alex, as he fixed his eyes on Daniel Brennan and started walking straight toward the stage. Rose realized what Alex meant and freaked out, assuming that Alex was probably going to try and create a scene on live TV. What she didn't know is that Alex was now not just a nobody. He was more powerful and rich than Daniel Brennan himself. Alex cut through the crowd and the news cameras and started climbing the steps to the stage. Then, to the shock of everyone, he walked straight to Mr. Brennan, as Rose, the crowd, and the reporters looked on in shock and anticipation. While Mr. Brennan turned pale as a ghost on seeing Alex walk towards him, Mr. Brennan's security guards started running towards Alex, but they were immediately stopped by Brennan. He gulped and spoke in a weak, trembling voice. Mr. Alexander Ambrose. What? What can I do for you? Rose. Her rich friends and everybody in the college couldn't believe what they were saying. How did the rich and powerful CEO recognize Alex? What was Alex going to do to the Brennans? Would he break his mother's promise? Will Alex finally hit back at all the people who have humiliated and insulted him? Hey guys, Alex here. Listen to full episodes of Insta Millionaire exclusively on the Pocket FM app. Click the link in the description to install the app now.